This is the briefing for photosynthesis, the practical that you are required to do for biochemistry laboratory course of PSB 1402. Uh, as usual, we start off by going through the principle for, or the background or the overview for the practical itself. But uh, for this one, it is actually uh, written to be divided in many sections in terms of its principle. But I'm going to just uh, give you in one go, or one overview for all the uh, experiments that we are conducting under the umbrella of uh, photosynthesis. Uh, these uh, principles also been covered in the lecture that you supposed to have with the biochemistry BSB 1113. So uh, here goes, basically uh, photosynthesis uh, involves uh, light dependent reaction or you know call it a light pathway. Uh, also there is another pathway light independent reaction. The light uh, dependent reaction will involve all this uh, system, uh, photosystem, got PS1, photosystem 1, and also photosystem 2. The photosystem 2 actually is more uh, uh, start off initially and then followed by photosystem 1. In the photosystems, there are uh, electron carriers. So what happens initially, the uh, light will be absorbed by uh, the pigment of uh, chlorophyll and then that will cause excitation of the electron and the electron will flow through these uh, carriers which is found in both PS2 as well as PS1. And once it travels, uh, the electron uh, will transfer energy and create a proton motive force and this proton motive force will be utilized in the making of ATP. And also uh, in the PS1, uh, uh, also the excitation of electron will be utilized or you know transferred, uh, transform the energy in the making of NADP. So basically, light reaction photosynthesis will generate at the end of the whole thing NADPH as well as ATP as well as the conversion of oxygen to water. So these are the three consequences of the light reaction. And after that, it goes the ATP and NADPH will then go into the light independent reaction of photosynthesis and there, the Kelvin cycle, uh, there where the carbon dioxide will be then converted to firstly glycerized dehyde 3 phosphate with the help of NADPH as well as ATP that has been produced earlier in the light reaction photosynthesis will be then made into glycerized dehyde 3 phosphate and eventually to glucose and so on. So that's my overview about the light reaction as well as uh, light independent reaction of uh, photosynthesis. So in this practical, since there are carriers of uh, electron in these uh, uh, photosystems, it is possible to use a dye. And this dye is the DCPIP, which is relevant uh, in the Hill reaction. It's been found in the Hill reaction where once it is able to also absorb electron. So just imagine you're putting the DCPIP in the solution that has this photosynthesis happening. And uh, apart from the complexes that can accept electron, if you have DCPIP, it can also accept electron and change color. The more it receives electron, it will change color from initially being blue to be colorless, uh, that is Hill reaction. Basically, this change of uh, color is proportionate and therefore can be quantitated. And this can be studied or monitored by using a spectrophotometer. So I covered the whole thing 
in terms of background as well as principle. So let's uh, move on to the next part where I give you in the usual manner some uh, YouTube videos that has been selected to be useful to understand this practical. There are part one uh, that is uh, we are supposed to uh, extract the pigment uh, of chlorophyll. Therefore, I provide some of the videos relevant to this part one. So have a, a look at it. Uh, of course, some of the experiments uh, that I give here, the videos I give here, having experiments about uh, photosynthesis, about chlorophyll extract, that you can actually perform at home. So it's up to you whether you can want to try it out at home or in your hostel. It is actually possible. You decide on that. Okay. And uh, moving on, part two. I have selected uh, two most viewed videos and also very much suitable. The one that is very suitable for or to understand uh, best about this practical is the second one here. As I put here, very much similar to this experiment itself. So ensure that you actually uh, look at this video. If you have no time, at least uh, this one must be uh, viewed before coming to the session of uh, practical. So moving on, so uh, again, uh, this has already been uh, in, uh, covered in length in uh, just now, me covering the principle of background or overview. So let's move on to the experiment, hopefully. Yeah, so uh, as I said, there are two parts, part A and part B. The uh, first part, is actually looking into uh, chlorophyll. So you're supposed to extract chlorophyll and then do an experiment and looking at where it absorbs maximum uh, related to uh, light absorption by the chlorophyll uh, in terms of which wavelength it uh, absorbs maximum. Uh, basically, the theory already been given in the lecture for photosynthesis. And we will also look at second part, which is part B. We're going to perform a number of experiments uh, related to reduction of DCPIP in uh, its rate of photosynthesis, looking at the importance of light for photosynthesis, looking at a chloroplast concentration, various concentration of chloroplast on uh, how it affects the rate of photosynthesis, and also these uh, two chemicals, one is DCMU, it is an inhibitor, and then gramicidin, which is an uncoupler. Okay, so this is all the procedures we're supposed to do in the practical, uh, so we'll cover in a while. I just want to bring your attention back to... Uh, just want to bring your attention to this, uh, this one here. If you look at this... This is the Hill reaction where DCPIP it is blue in color. And then uh, if due to the absorption of light and also in the presence of chlor chlorophyll, it will change uh, from uh, blue to colorless. So the more it receives uh, electrons, the more it will change to be colorless because it is also uh, you know, a carrier of uh, uh, electron or more like you know uh, receives the electron and react okay so uh, we go back to the top so we're going to look into the first part which is light absorption of different wavelength by chlorophyll extract so what we do here we are to prepare chlorophyll extract so don't get uh, misunderstood the second part we will extract chloroplast this one, we are only extracting the pigment. For that purpose, we will use ethanol. So let me just uh, draw to you what we're supposed to do based on all this uh, uh, description. What you need to do is you're supposed to take a beaker. Okay. And then uh, you're supposed to set it on top of a heating mantle which you will see in the laboratory, how it looks like. It has a stirring capability as well as a 
having heat okay, is connected to the socket. So with the beaker set, you then uh, supposed to put 30 ml of ethanol. Okay, you put ethanol inside. And then you're supposed to take the uh, leaves. These are spinach leaves or in Malay, they call it bayam, fresh ones. And then uh, ensure that they are put at the bottom, okay, the leaves. Please do not crush them. Uh, leave it intact or if you need to cut it, cut it in large uh, sizes. And then you pour the 30 ml of absolute ethanol or ethanol. And you then start the heater with the uh, low heat. Uh, uh, remember, you're using the solvent or ethanol. It has a low uh, uh, boiling point. So uh, we will uh, assist you on uh, what setting to be used for the heating mantle. And uh, hopefully, you will see that the color of ethanol, which is uh, uh, you know colorless, eventually, as you uh, start to stir with a glass rod once in a while, it will start to become green. And uh, depending on uh, how satisfied you are in terms of the green color, then next thing is you're supposed to conduct this uh, procedure where you set the spectrophotometer uh, at 750 nm. And then by using uh, the ethanol alone, that means you're supposed to have two QS, okay. These are the QS or sample cells, they call it. You're supposed to put into the spectrophotometer. The first one you put at uh, three quarter of the way uh, with ethanol alone. And then the second one, you put this uh, 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 chlorophyll extract that you have, uh, you know, uh, done. So this one will be known as the blank and its purpose is to zero the spectrophotometer. Okay, so that's done. And then you insert in another slot, a uh, designated slot with the uh, chlorophyll extract with the wavelength set at 750 and then uh, see the reading. If the reading is, you know, greater than 0.1, then you have to do dilation and try to achieve it between 0 0.09 till uh, oh, uh, 0 0.1. Okay. Uh, just for your understanding, uh, the this practical procedure is a very, very uh, years ago, but the current technology doesn't require you to be worried so much about this uh, uh, range. If you can achieve close to 0 0.1, is already good enough to proceed with the uh, current spectrophotometer that we have in our laboratory. Okay, so uh, but if you want to follow accordingly to these uh, steps, then also possible. If you've gone more than 0 0.1, then do some dilution with ethanol to bring it down to this range. And if it is say 0 0.04 then uh, you have to go back and extract again using this method that I have already explained. Okay, Right, so uh, assuming you already achieved this uh, range of 0 0.09 to 0 0.10 absorbent, let's move on to next step. Here you set the spectrophotometer to 350 nm. Okay? And then, of course, you have to auto zero the spectrophotometer. Every time you change the wavelength of a spectrophotometer, you need to blank it, auto zero it. Okay. So, assuming you're done, now you uh, do the reading using this uh, QED that has your extract. And uh, you uh, record down the absorbance. After that, at 355, uh, every time interval of uh, 5 mm increase, you do the same thing, the step that is supposed to auto zero and then read. So you do that. And then 360, do again. 365, do again. And up to the level of 900 mm. Again, 
uh, just for your uh, understanding and also to be you know comfortable uh, you don't have to do it at 350 355 360 until 900 nm this is a old uh, practical procedure in fact there is a setting and uh, in the spectrophotometer they call it a uh, scan mode if you can uh, do the scan mode in our new spectrophotometer the latest spectrophotometers they have the scan mode you do not have to uh, do this interval of 5 nm every time it will do the scanning from 350 up to 900 nm within uh, you know uh, less than a minute so that is uh, what is uh, good about the latest technology okay right after you already have all the uh, absorbance for the respective uh, wavelength from 350 to 900 uh, in the interval of 5 nm every time, you can then plot the graph of wavelength versus absorbance and then you may discuss the results that you have obtained. So that's the uh, part A of the uh, uh, practical itself. Now we move on to uh, part B. Uh, this one I already covered in terms of the understanding of the theory or the principle or the overview or the background. Let's move to the uh, preparation itself. Firstly, you have to prepare certain uh, requisites. Uh, you need to prepare the buffer uh, at pH 7. This is also a very old uh, you know, uh, step where they require you to prepare sodium phosphate sorbitol, uh, sorbitol buffer which we already uh, you know modified to use uh, what is referred as uh, pbs uh, or phosphate buffer solution at ph7 as well okay so uh, since it comes in a tablet we just uh, put it with the amount of uh, solution or, or water and then it's already ready to go next part you're supposed to prepare chloroplast or if the cells break down it will be in thylakoid form so chloroplast or thylakoid extract so how do we prepare this so you're supposed to take say 20 gram of the spinach leaf and then add with the 50 ml of pbs and by using a blender you uh, you know blend it for very uh, short period of time only 30 seconds after that, we don't want to use uh, Wattman paper because that will be very fine uh, filtration. We want to do a rough uh, filtration. So we just use these uh, four layers of uh, cheese cloth instead. You will know what is the cheese cloth when we go to the laboratory. We will assist you. Okay. So with the uh, rough filtration, you will have the filtrate. And this will be having uh, intact chloroplast or a bit broken down chloroplast, which will have thylakoid extract. And you need to, since it's a bit, uh, you know, a live form of uh, uh, material, you need to keep it in ice bath uh, so it doesn't get uh, 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 broken down or uh, no longer active. So throughout the experiment, you're supposed to keep it in ice. And next, you are supposed to prepare DCPIP, DCMU, Gramycidin in the concentration that is uh, shown here. Obviously, uh, you need to uh, calculate by using the formulas N equals MB over 1000. One uh, thing to uh, be concerned about, when you calculate, you will realize it is going into very low uh, milligram or you know weight that uh, unable to be weighed in even our uh, very high-tech analytical balance in the laboratory. So what it means is you need to prepare in excess. Uh, so uh, you have to consider in a bigger volume or bigger gram and then only, uh, you know, a bit wasteful, but no choice. Okay. I again will, uh, you know, talk about this in the laboratory. Right. Assuming you already prepare the uh, chloroplast extract and also all the material we then start the first of the uh, few experiments need to be done in part b uh, the first one is reduction of dcpip and to measure the photosynthetic rate 
So what you're supposed to do, you pour the chloroplast extract uh, in the uh, everything we do in the cuet. Uh, it's a plastic cuet. Okay. So forgive me for uh, missing out on drawing there. Okay. Okay. So this is the cuet. It's sufficient to just pour roughly at three quarter, as been shown. And then uh, you add a drop or very tiny drop to be uh, at the end to be faint uh, blue, uh, not so dark blue. It only works if you add very little. So I would say droplet rather than drop of this uh, DCPIP solution. And after that, you either you know use your finger with the glove present or you use paraflim. Uh, you will see what is paraflim. We put it there and then uh, you turn it upside down to mix. Also will be shown in the laboratory. Right? So once you've already done the mixing, you then set the spectrophotometer at uh, 600 mm. And then uh, after, of course, you need to blank the uh, spectrophotometer again. This time, don't use ethanol you use the phosphate buffer solution, the PBS, since you extracted the chloroplast using uh, PBS. Okay? So you get to the reading, at uh, they call this is a zero reading. And then after that, you place this cuet uh, with the uh, chloroplast in a small beaker. Okay, so you put the... Uh, there and also you are to have a little bit of uh, water okay just uh, not to submerge the whole cuet just uh, below it okay so then uh, on top is supposed to be a light bulb which is to be on okay and uh, so this is supposed to mimic the uh, uh, sunlight. Okay, so uh, so you place the uh, cuvette in a small beaker of water, 50 cm from 100 watt desk lamp. Okay, and leave it uh, the exposure to this light for five minutes exactly, and then you go back and read the absorbent like what you did just now at 600 mm, and then you repeat it again. So uh, first time five minutes and then another five minutes another five minutes you may ask me uh, how long need to do this uh, so from previous experience you can uh, do this interval of five minutes for 35 uh, 30 to 45 minutes in total once you see a, a, a clear reduction of absorbent uh, then it is uh, uh, enough uh, no need to continue further. So basically, uh, you just want to see whether uh, this setup will cause photosynthesis and there will be a reduction in the absorbance uh, that is given by the DCPIP. Okay? So after that, you explain the result in the laboratory report. So moving on, we look at uh, the second of the few experiments. This time, uh, whether light is important for the rate of uh, photosynthesis. For that, I just straight away look at the uh, table. Uh, so, you know, you're supposed to prepare four cuvettes, okay? And then uh, the chloroplast extract, again, you add. But you can see third cuvet do not have the chloroplast extract. While the first cuvet uh, buffer all have, DCPIP uh, not been added for QAT1 uh, and then not been uh, covered with aluminium foil. That means light can pass through the first QAT. Uh, second QAT also light can pass through. Uh, second QAT has everything. It has chloroplast extract, buffer, DCPIP. And the third QAT missing on chloroplast extract is chloroplast important for the experiment. So this is the purpose of that. And then the fourth one, we actually cover with aluminium foil so that light cannot penetrate. Okay, so this four cuvet has different different purposes. Let's see what you're supposed to do with all the four cuvets. 
you cover all the QFs with paraflame and then ensure you mix them thoroughly. And then uh, you go to the spectrophotometer and do the reading at uh, zero uh, time. That means not been exposed to light yet. Uh, as, except, uh, don't forget, Q at 4 is actually been wrapped with aluminium foil. So when you do the reading, you remove the aluminium foil naturally to do the reading or not, cannot read. Okay. And then you place all the four Q at in the light source, just like uh, given here. Uh, you, uh, you do the same thing. All four you can put within the uh, beaker, a bit of large, larger beaker. Okay. Right. So you give the exposure for one minute and then go to the spectrophotometer and uh, read all four in terms of their absorbance. And then go back to the light source, expose for two minutes, and then do the spectrophotometer reading, followed by four minutes and eight minutes. So that will be the total exposure, uh, the last one being uh, exposure for eight minutes, and then see what is happening to each of the QED in terms of their absorbent reading, and then explain in your laboratory report. Right, we now move to another uh, sub-experiment in uh, uh, part B. Now this one, we're going to see whether the chloroplast, uh, uh, you know, has anything uh, to do with the photosynthesis. And also what happens if you slowly increase the concentration from low to high uh, for the rate of photosynthesis. For that, uh, in terms of number of cuvettes, four cuvettes, and you have the first cuvette having no chloroplast, uh, chloroplast at all. And then you have to have the, you know, same amount of buffer for all. And also you see no DCP PIP added. And uh, the second one, 0.5, uh, third one, one. So slowly increase in terms of the concentration of chloroplast. Of course, ensure that uh, it all has the uh, DC PIP added. And just like uh, the experiment we just explained, do the reading at zero minute at 600 Nm after you auto zero the uh, spectrophotometer for all these four QFs and then expose it to light for one minute followed by reading the absorbance two minute four minute and lastly again at eight minute of exposure for the light source okay and again uh, see how the effect uh, changes based on all these conditions okay then we move on to another experiment where we uh, uh, check out the uh, exposure or the presence of uh, DCMU. DCMU is an inhibitor. Find out in terms of the theory, what does it inhibit? Okay. So this experiment, uh, again, uh, you need uh, several cuvettes. Here, three cuvettes, three plastic cuvettes. You put yeah, for all of them, 0.5 ml of uh, extract, uh, the preparation of extract, chloroplast, and then buffer accordingly. So the total will be 2.5 ml of uh, volume. A bit of DCPIP, faint blue, enough to start the experiment. So what's the difference between Q1 to 3? Q1 does not have DCMU. Q2 has a uh, lowest concentration of DCMU, which is 10 power of negative 6. And then uh, DCMU, a bit higher concentration with 10 power of negative 4. And then uh, in the same as the two other experiments that I've already explained, similarly, you uh, do the reading at zero. That means no exposure with light immediately. And then exposure with one minute of light, two minutes, four minutes of light exposure, and finally, eight minutes of light exposure. And then see uh, what happens to the absorbent. Is it, uh, you know, from high become low or no changes or from, uh, you know, uh, uh, an absorb absorbent, which is, uh, 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 that is a reading, and then become high slowly. So these are the three options that's possible, right? 
And then uh, this should be the last uh, sub experiment for part B. Now we look into effect of uh, uncoupler that is gramicidine. This is a INO4, that means it creates holes in the ty thylakoid membrane. So let's see what happens when you have uh, these three uh, QEDs. Uh, so again, chloroplast for all, buffer, and then a bit of DCPIP. And then the first QED, uh, no uh, gramicidine. Uh, second one, having gramicidine. Third one, uh, not only gramicidine, also DCMU. So what happens in combination? So again, uh, read at uh, no exposure of light immediately, one minute exposure, two minute, four minute, as well as eight minute, and get all the uh, absorbent and write it here. And also see what happens in terms of their reading, whether uh, increasing, decreasing, or staying put. Okay, so uh, we come to the end of the briefing. Uh, so you, from your result, you're supposed to discuss the effect of light, chloroplast concentration, inhibitor, as well as in combination with the uncoupler towards the rate of photosynthesis. Uh, and then what are the principal action of DCPIP, gramicidine, as well as DCMU? See how you can uh, retrieve this information from the uh, uh, website uh, about what how they work. Okay? And then uh, explain why you need to place the QED in a beaker of water for this experiment. So that's it in terms of the task or question. All these should be in your report at the uh, results uh, and discussion section, okay? Right, I am uh, uh, completing this briefing and uh, this will be uh, already available in the YouTube uh, channel. Thank you very much.